Mein Name ist Silvan Klaudrath. Ich bin quer durch Deutschland gereist, um mich mit den spannendsten Führungspersönlichkeiten auf einen Kaffee zu treffen. Heute bei Culture Coffee, Ida Tin, die CEO von Clue. At Culture Coffee, we speak about CEOs from all different walks of life. And, you know, I'm looking for common themes that, that occur. One of the themes that I heard very often is authenticity. And it feels natural to agree. Yes, a leader should be authentic and, you know, it's important for company culture. But I'm also trying to understand what is that exactly? Because I've never heard anybody say, I'm pretty unauthentic. <laughs> so, I mean, everybody would say they're authentic. Um, so, what is that really? Hmm. Well, I think to some extent we live in a culture where it's accepted to put on that particular kind of clothing or maybe makeup or other things that will give an appearance. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, I don't think we celebrate true authenticity that much. Like, how often do we have role models that go up and say, yeah, it was terrifying, it, you know, I was afraid. There is a whole sort of dark side of tech and founders having mental health issues or, mm -hmm. you know, I think there is a big part of culture actually not being really welcoming mm -hmm. authenticity. Mm -hmm. So I think why we still say it, it's because we are hungry for something that we can actually relate to. Because we don't relate to superhumans, we relate to humans. <laughs> and we relate to brands who can say, you know, who can tell a story that feels like something I can grasp and feel that I can belong to. And so I think we are hungry for authenticity. I think people are starving for it actually, but it's not so easy to get to come by. I think, I think it's actually kind of rare. Yeah, I can definitely see how the media um, has an influence in that and also how we work with each other has an influence in that. The question is, how, how do you become authentic if you feel like you can't be yourself, um, either as a leader or just as a team member, either or, right? So, I think you have to be really courageous and I think you have to be courageous enough to be quite vulnerable and to explain in a company why that is strength. You know, why, I mean, the whole thing about feedback culture is in a way making ourselves vulnerable, both like, hey, that didn't work well for me when you did such and such, or okay, I hear this and I need to change this and this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having a, having a culture where we practice vulnerability and we practice actually taking off the perfect mask, um, It, it takes training, it takes real intentional <laughs> company culture building. Um, and I think especially for leaders where people also project a lot of things, right? They, they project this sort of idea of always doing the right thing or having the answers or being really good at making decisions. Like there's this whole list of what we think leaders need to look like. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing to, to also make people a little bit uncomfortable to trade off that they don't get this pinnacle idea of person, but actually something a little more real. In my mind, I'm about to say that there's a flip side to anything, and sometimes authenticity can also be used to justify something that's not fair, right? So it's like, you know, this is how I feel, I'm just going to say this now, and uh, you, know, you might be confrontational mm. to other people, and you know, using authenticity as the justification of that. I'm trying to... Um, paint a picture. So sometimes in a, in a company, for example, things can get very heated because people take pride in their work mm. and then you have to sort of cool things down. How do you actually do that? How do you help people <laughs> distinguish when it's fair to push back and how to push back? So, mm. Well, I think there is a really good first rule is to like talk about yourself. The second you start a sentence with you, you're like off track, <laughs> literally, which is contradiction as I just said it now. But, you know, you start with saying, this makes me angry. Like, I'm angry. You know, I think this projection of like, you did such and such, so that's why I'm miserable. It's like, no, actually, <laughs> you're miserable. Let's start with that fact. Then we'll look at how we might change things. But so when things are heated, I think, learning how to get back to being able to actually 
be open enough to say what's actually going on. And, and that's why I think the self-knowledge is the first part. Like, why did I actually get so triggered? Mm. Well, it might have something to do with, you know, my mom. It might not actually be you or, you know, who knows, whatever Very it might be. It is, right? So having that sort of, it's really like a skill set to build this self-knowledge and to understand mm. these dynamics and help people get out of their triggers, right? If people are heated, be like, okay, you know, <laughs> let's, you know, <laughs> let's take five minutes, <laughs> you know, or like, or just even mirror back, like, okay, I, I can see that you're getting annoyed with me right now. I, like, can we have this conversation? Might be like, no, like, Maybe postpone, doesn't work. Right? Postpone it, yeah. or do we need some more people in the room? Do we need to have a different process around it? There's so much you can do to, like to not just go off to, <laughs> and sometimes it goes off to, and then sometimes like, okay, I need a hug, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Or, um, yeah, sort of coming back to that point where you own the shit. So when we think about leaders, um, what are the tools of a leader? So if you're a craftsman, if you're a carpenter, let's say, it's super easy to understand, right? So it's obviously mm -hmm. knowledge, and then there's the actual physical tools. Um, so I wouldn't say that the tools of a leader are Excel and PowerPoint and those things. I assume you don't either. Um, so what are the tools of a leader? I think you have many categories of tools. You have your... You have your inner tools, which is what we just talked about, sort of how do you stay grounded and healthy yourself and what nurtures you, what you need to do to stay healthy, um, whether it's you know sleep or run or meditation or something else that can sort of keep you well. And then you have tools, which is getting help, advisors, mentors, teachers, trainers, you know, people that can can help you with a different perspective or just listen to you or just ease your mind, you know, what, you know many different reasons why you want to talk to people. Um, then you definitely have all the sort of productivity tools that sort of help you get things done or create an overview or communicate to people and loop people in, like getting that workflow to be smooth, I think is quite important. Um, but I think, at least for me as a leader, I will say the most sort of valuable resource is my own inspiration or my own joy of um, sort of the connection to why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this again? <laughs> it's hard every day. There is a lot of things that are not fun. Mm -hmm. So why am I doing this? And, um, and finding ways to kind of connect back to that is important. The kernel, almost, right? Yeah, so. yeah. The purpose, the kernel, the the driver, mm. the driver, getting kind of making sure that that inner engine gets fueled, mm -hmm. things. Right. And that's actually one thing that I think we don't necessarily um, see as an important task as a leader. I try to have every Wednesdays with no meetings, mm -hmm. you know, to have time to think, have time to do the kind of thing that takes longer or even just to sort of let my mind work, you know? And I feel we underappreciate giving leaders time to think. I mean, and then the most important thing that leaders have to do is to figure out, you know, what should we do? How do we tackle this? What direction? When, how soon? Like all these choices and decisions. But yet our days are like meetings, 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 and busy, 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 and it's crazy. Like I, I just read somewhere that Bill Gates have his like monthly kind of go read a book somewhere. Like it makes complete sense, but I think we need to build this in much more. And for, I think sometimes for the teens that can be quite difficult. It's like, oh, like she's out playing golf or something. You know, it's like, I don't play golf. But you know, that sense of like, it looks like leisure. Um, when in fact, that's maybe the thing that keeps us being able to run this marathon and not run into walls, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, there's this sense that you need to look busy in, let's say, a corporate environment, maybe, um, so maybe also in some other places. And actually, I find myself rather often being in the office and literally sitting there in front of my PC and not touching the PC, just thinking, which is something mm. that, that you just mm. alluded to. Um, I think that's a good, good practice too. Mm. So we spoke about a lot of stuff um, 
authenticity a little earlier. We spoke about um, you know what makes a good leader. Um, all of us make mistakes, um, so I mm -hmm. feel it's good celebrating those things as well. Can you make it, maybe speak about a leadership mishap that in hindsight mm -hmm. you think you know I would have done it differently, would have known blah blah blah, mm -hmm. probably without names and numbers, but maybe, <laughs> you know can you explain a situation that yeah. you still think back to? <coughs> I think some of the biggest mistakes have been around setting the team. Um, because sometimes, you know, I have, have, have had like a great working relationship with this person, you know, wonderful conversations and a lot of value overlap and, you know, all good. And then other people had a very different experience. And the time like it took me to understand mm. that my experience was not shared with the team was too long. So I think one of the things I've learned is to make sure that my sort of th threshold for, you know, what I'll sort of be fine with or kind of, yeah, people are a little funny, but like, <laughs> we'll make it work or sort of, it's not the same as that of the team necessarily who also maybe have to work together in a much closer way and, you know, are faced with these problems in a different intense way every day. So to really navigate after sort of the team, the team's assessment and the team health rather than my own Calibration. I think that's been a big learning. Um, I think, other than that, some of the biggest mistakes are things that I didn't do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the... Yeah, it's actually not things that we do and try and, oh, okay, that didn't work. We're trying to, it's like, it's the, it's the things we don't see. That's what freaks me out the most. It's the... It's the you know, Unknown unknowns. Yeah. That's really, you know, the, the sort of the creeping things where you look back and be like, oh my God, like, why didn't, like, two years ago, like, what the hell were we thinking? Like, why, you know, why didn't we, you know, where, yeah, you're, you're, you learn more, your perspective changes, and then suddenly you look back and it's kind of gleaming obvious that you should have done something different, but you just didn't, it didn't compute, you know, maybe you didn't take enough time to sit and stare into your PC without doing anything. But, but that's, I think, are the biggest mistakes.